Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and yesterday we made a video of the most overhyped players in FPL. This time we're going to do the most underhyped players, the players that are making me say, why are people not picking these guys? So in this video you're going to find some really nice differentials and just some players in general that maybe are not being appreciated enough by the FPL community. If you do enjoy this one, please do drop a like, it really does help out the channel and subscribe if you want more FPL tips in your faces every single day. Let's have a look at these players starting off with my eighth most underhyped player in FPL right now. If you're looking for the best pick in web safety and anonymity this summer, then how about our mates over at Surfshark, a VPN service that keeps your identity safe online. It's basically like installing Andre Onana to your PC or mobile phone, but not only this, Surfshark allows you to browse the internet as if you are in a different country. If you don't have access to certain football channels and networks in your country, no problem, set your location to somewhere else using Surfshark and you can now access it. Maybe you want to watch Match of the Day or Sky Go from On Vacation and it's not working, or you're getting that annoying this content is unavailable in your country message. Just because you're playing away, it doesn't mean your internet needs to be. But here is my favourite part. If you've watched all of the best series on Netflix and you want to unlock all of the content over on USA Netflix, for example, you can easily do so. You can switch countries faster than you can switch your captain's armband to Erling Haaland each week. Protect your identity, be safe online and access web content from around the world wherever you are. And you can now get three months extra for free just use promo code FPLMATE, all one word to get this offer, or you can simply click the link in my description. It really helps support the channel and you get a great service for a heavily discounted price. And if you somehow don't like it, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee too. So unlike in FPL, everybody wins. So my eighth most underhyped player and the most owned player at 14.6% on this list is going to be Ollie Watkins, a player who has maybe not seen enough love this preseason. I feel like that is the case. A lot of people opting to go for Gabriel Jesus or maybe Nkunku as their second striker next to Erling Haaland. Well, why not Ollie Watkins? I mean, he did really well last season. He made himself pretty much essential during certain parts of last season with decent goal scoring records, scoring very, very regularly and very, very consistently, which is something we like. His underlying numbers are pretty good. Last season, he was pretty much doing 0.64 attacking returns per game. So you're going to get two attacking returns every three games from him based on last season's data, which is decent. His expected kind of numbers are actually slightly better, but we know Ollie Watkins is not the perfect finisher. He does miss the odd chance. So we have got some really good numbers here to back this pick up a lot. And we are expecting Aston Villa to have a really good season this year. They're a team that are massively improving, improved a lot at the end of last season, and then also have brought in a lot of good players, done some really good business. And I think they could be the new Brighton, the new Newcastle of this new season, and really challenge for those European places more so than they did last season. We've got Everton in game week two. We've got Burnley in game week three. And we've also got Watkins, who not only is the centre of all of these wonderful things that Aston Villa are doing right now with all of their new additions to the team, we've also also got their penalty taker and penalty takers are definitely players that we want to add into our FPL team so you can get an extra penalty taker by going for Ollie Watkins over the likes of Gabriel Jesus maybe you can get that one more penalty taker in your team which is going to help you a lot uh, to get those kind of lucky points here and there but that's what we like that's what FPL is all about so Ollie Watkins at 14% ownership to me is undervalued people are not valuing this guy enough and maybe people need to think about him a little bit more why are people not talking about ollie watkins a little bit more he is very good in a very good team Next up, Martinelli, and how could I make a video like this without talking about my guy? He is obviously a player who I've hyped up a little bit myself, but uh, I feel like we can all come together and get this player a little bit more hyped because he is still very much an underhyped player in the overall FPL community because a lot of people really can't find a place for him in their team. They are busy with Saka in their team. They've probably got Jesus in their team, and they've probably got an, an Arsenal defender like Gabriel, maybe, or Ramsdale in goal, and they actually can't fit in Martinelli. But just because you can't fit in Martinelli, Martinelli doesn't mean him is a bad pick. In fact, I think he's a very good pick indeed. Did really well last year. Kind of, if he's scoring 15 goals per season last year in the Premier League or more, then this season, surely he can do even better. Really, really clinical. A player who outperforms his XG because he's the best finisher that Arsenal have. And the, actually the main goal threat in Arsenal as well. Gabriel Jesus is more of a false nine and Saka is more of a creator than he is a goal scorer. So Martinelli is actually the, uh, the main uh, goal scoring threat in this Arsenal team. And if you think Arsenal are going to have a good 
season and Martinelli is a young player who is improving in an improving team, then are we talking about a 20 goal season for Martinelli? Hey, I know that's a big shout, but I don't think it's unreasonable and my outlandish prediction for this new season is that Martinelli could become the new highest scoring midfielder in FPL for this coming season. I can definitely see it happening and I can hear you guys just saying Martinelli is not nailed on. He is going to get rotated. He's going to get rested. Well, a lot of people said that last season. That didn't really happen. Even after Trossard came in, Martinelli started every single game available to him other than two. He was only benched on two occasions and that's exactly the same as Gabriel Jesus. It's exactly the same as Saka. So there's really no difference last season in terms of who is kind of the player who is going to get rested or rotated. You know, Martinelli is a player who is very much a main starting player for Arsenal. And I think a lot of Arsenal fans will kind of agree with me when I say he ain't going anywhere. You know, he's really not going anywhere. He's not really a player that Arsenal can afford to leave out because he is so crucial to the way Arsenal play. He's on some set pieces as well. He's often the uh, kind of uh, kind of th uh, threat from the set pieces as well in terms of getting those crosses into him. Him and Gabriel, uh, the, the, the centre-back Gabriel as well. A lot of Gabriels for Arsenal, don't get me wrong. Uh, so yeah, Martinelli, really underappreciated. I feel like Arsenal fans in particular will back me up when I say this guy is an insane pick. He could easily outscore every other player player in the Arsenal team this season. There's no doubt about that one. So if you're worried about minutes or whatever, fair enough. But hey, this guy doesn't need minutes to do insanely well. Last season, only, you know, only lost to Saka on total points by four. Only scored four less points and he got, got injured for the last two games. So could have easily got those four points and matched Saka despite not being on penalties, despite being on less set pieces because his open play threat is so much better than all of his teammates. He really is the real deal. Love Martinelli. And I feel like more people need to appreciate this guy for the great FBO asset that he is. He'll be in my team. Another player who could be in my team come game week one deadline is Eberechi Eze. Now, the reason I like Eze so much is because he is the talisman of his team. And I love talisman theory because it works so well in FPL. Because if you get the talisman from the team, then they're the guys getting the goals. They've got the guys getting assists. They're the guys picking up the bonus points because there's no one else really to get them, I suppose. And this is really a consistent thing because... It, it, because Eze is everything. He's, he's kind of involved in 40% of Crystal Palace's goals. That's what we saw last season. And with Zaha leaving and Elise injured, he's going to be even more involved in even more goals for Crystal Palace. He's going to be on set pieces. He's going to be on corners, free kicks. He's going to be the new penalty taker at the club as well. He's going to have so many opportunities and avenues to score FPL points. And it doesn't matter if you only think Crystal Palace are going to score one or two goals per game because guess who's going to be the one getting the goals and getting the assists? it's going to be this guy and he's also going to be picking up bonus points in those low scoring games so that is something that is underappreciated people kind of avoid these teams lower down the the table but if you can find the talisman from those teams it doesn't matter they can match all of the top players and at the end of last season Eze was scoring points for fun he was doing so so well really really improving very very rapidly so at just 12 percent ownership a lot of people seem to be avoiding him going for the other 6.5 million midfielders uh Mitoma and Mbumo Eze should in my opinion be level with those guys he's on the same kind of page as those guys as far as I'm concerned and it's definitely worth having a look at with some decent opening fixtures here where against Sheffield United Wolves in uh uh, game week four as well could be a really really nice player to go for Chilwell didn't have the greatest season last year had some injuries and Chelsea obviously not keeping those clean sheets not doing very well at all but new season new manager hopefully an improvement from Chelsea and what we've seen in the preseason friendly so far is that Chelsea are going to be left side dominant and that means Chilwell as the left back is going to be very attacking in that Pochettino system really overlapping or cutting inside getting through on goal getting goal scoring opportunities and passing to his teammates in those final third or in and around the box areas and that's exactly what we want from an attacking defender because Chilwell is definitely one of those guys who can revolutionize a game week he is capable of 15 pointers he is capable of 20 pointers he is the player who can turn an average score into an insane score just with one player and that's exactly what I'm looking for in FPL those high exciting players that's what it's all about really and with one less game to play each week for Chelsea with no European football Chilwell is hopefully going to be able to play more 
get rotated less and get injured less as well, which is also a very, very positive thing because when Chilwell is not injured, he becomes an insane FPL asset. And right now he is not injured. So he is an insane FPL asset. You could pick him up for just 5.5 million. After the Liverpool game, Chelsea have insane fixtures. And even that Liverpool game, the last four times these two teams have met, it's been nil-nil on each occasion. So Chilwell can definitely grab you a clean sheet in that game. And then after that, it's going to be points galore for him as long as he can stay fit and you are willing to take a player who may, uh, may get injured at some point and you have to use a transfer. But hey, that's what transfers are for, right? Our number four underhyped player is Paul Torres. 3.5% owned. This is seriously low. We're getting into differential territory here, and that's absolutely fine by me. So Aston Villa, as I say, are a team we're expecting to do really well this season. And Paul Torres, as the new starting centre-back, should be nailed on in that left centre-back position. The most nailed on of all of the uh, Aston Villa defenders at kind of 4.5 million. And I feel like he is possibly the best 4.5 million defender in the entire game. He is a ball-playing centre-back, so he's going to pick up bonus points naturally. Aston Villa keep a lot of clean sheets. We saw at the end of last season, he's going to be nailed on playing every game. He has a decent amount of XG from his time in Spain last season. There is so much to love about this guy. He's got good fixtures against Everton and Burnley in game week two and three. So why is he only 3.5% owned? I'm guessing it's because a lot of people don't really know too much about this guy. Well, let me tell you, he is the real deal. And he is a player who has been uh, really a one of the one of, almost one of the best rated centre backs in world football over the last three or four years. He really has been at that level. So this guy really is a player you want to strongly consider in that 4.5 million defender slot. And here's a bit of bonus information for you guys. If you have a 4.5 million Crystal Palace defender to play alongside Pal Torres, you can rotate those two players and you're pretty much always going to have a super easy fixture between those guys. So you can keep rotating them in and out, one playing in each game week and always get a super easy fixture. So that's one to think about as well. Get this guy, honestly. 3.5% is crazy for how good he is. And obviously, I couldn't make an underrated player video without mentioning Solly Marge, who is the number three most underrated, underappreciated player in this FPL preseason. People just are not are not realising that this guy is, is the GOAT, the GOAT of Brighton at least, because he is the player who has the best attacking threat of any Brighton player, or at least that's what we saw last season. He really was the guy far more direct than a lot of his teammates, particularly those other midfielders. And in the forward position, it's difficult to actually pick who is going to be starting regularly for Brighton. But when Solly March plays, he is the man. And you can see his expected points last season per start was 5.34. Now that is significant because out of all of the midfielders in FPL, that puts him at number five. And the four players that beat Solly March last season for expected points per start were Salah, Rashford, Bruno Fernandes and Kevin De Bruyne. So I don't know. I'm not saying that March is as good as those players, but the numbers suggest that maybe he is. Now, obviously, he did underperform a little bit last season. You can see his goals, 0.19 per game, where he got 0.31 XG last season per game. So that is a you know, slight decrease there. But I do feel like at times he did get a little bit unlucky, but I'm not going to pretend he's an amazing fix, uh, finisher because he's not. But you can see that he gets enough chances because he is so direct and so important uh, kind of in those final positions in the Brighton attacks that actually he is going to naturally pick up points. So the fact that he is by far, well, not by far, you know, he just about beats Kaoru Mitama in terms of those underlying numbers from last season, but he beats all of the other 6.5 million midfielders comfortably in his uh, underlying numbers. You know, we've got a situation here where the 6.5 mid, uh, million midfielder with the best numbers from last year is the one who is overlooked the most. Everyone's going for Mitoma and Bruma. Some people going for Eze instead. No one's going for March. No one's talking about March. And I don't. I think people are just not willing to take the risk. They've seen everyone else is going for Mitoma. Therefore, we have to go for Mitoma. I don't actually think that's the case. This is a real smart way to play differentials if you want to go for March instead because on paper, he is the better pick if you're brave enough to go against the crowd. Criminally, criminally underappreciated at 3.1% ownership. Maybe we can pop that up a little bit and, and get more people involved in the Solly March gang. I'm wearing a Solly March shirt today, by the way, in case you didn't notice. I, I absolutely love this player. <laughs>
Number two on this list is Nicholas Jackson, and I'm sorry, Nick Jackson. I am for real, because I can't believe you are just 2.9% owned. This is the new starting Chelsea striker. So far in preseason, he has looked really, really good, the real deal. And although at first, I don't think people really expected him to go straight into the Chelsea team in the new season, but... He's kind of proving himself, and I feel like Chelsea, you know, they can either play Nkunku there or Jackson there. They're kind of lacking in a kind of the kind of attacking midfield position in, in that kind of slot behind the striker. So Nkunku is probably going to have to drop back there, and that leaves the, the striker position really open for Jackson. He's really the only player who can play there. So that's a really good positive sign for him, and if he can keep playing really well in preseason, which he has been so far, then he should actually work his way into the team a little bit earlier than expected. So good positive things from this one. Uh, one thing to note about Nick Jackson is the fact that he is uh, definitely a player who did really well at the end of last season in the Spanish league. No, not, not a lot of people know about this guy, but I'll just give you a brief rundown. Basically, kind of broke through, breakthrough season last year, ended the season insanely, insanely well, scoring nine goals and two assists in just eight games against the likes of Atletico Madrid, Bilbao, Sevilla. You know, he played in some difficult games during that period, so it's not like he was just, you know, smashing goals in against farmers. He was actually doing really well. Uh, and I think Chelsea have kind of bought him in, kind of thinking, yeah, okay, we'll get this guy in. Let's see what he can do. Uh, maybe we'll buy another striker. Didn't buy another striker, which kind of left him as the only forward at the club other than Armando Broya and Nkunku if he's playing out of position. So it's an interesting situation that we have here, but there is so much potential. If you are someone who owns Nkunku, who is obviously listed as a forward, but you don't really want to have a forward in FPL who's actually playing in midfield or on the wing, then Nick Jackson for 0.5 million cheaper could be the solution to that. There is a little bit of risk with this one, but I'm telling you, if he keeps playing the way he's playing in preseason, he is going to cement himself in that Chelsea lineup come game week one against Liverpool. Which means our number one most under-hyped player of FPL 2023-24 is Sam Johnston, the goalkeeper extraordinaire. 4.5 million goalkeeper, just 1.1% own. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I mean, uh, I don't really know too much about this guy. He played a little bit at the end of the last season, didn't he, when Guaita was injured? Well, yes, and he did really, really well. Um, I remember picking him up for myself at the end of last season because, you know, I saw a little bit of potential there and I thought, all right, let's take a let's take a go on this guy. Uh, that sounds a little bit sus, but ignore me. Um, <laughs> but basically, he, uh, he is a player who I definitely... Uh, remembered enjoying owning let me just say it that way because he did so so well and I feel like he did so well in real life football and in FPL terms that he is probably going to cement himself as the new number one Crystal Palace goalkeeper ahead of Guaita there's no reason to drop him now Guaita is getting a little bit older and Johnston is obviously a very very good goalkeeper and in his nine games at the end of last season he proved that he was one of the best goalkeepers in FPL and I'm not even exaggerating when I say that he was the fifth best scoring goalkeeper during that period. In fact, if you go kind of over the course of the whole season and look at points per game, Johnston was the fifth of all of the goalkeepers from last year who are going to be regular starters in the new season. Johnston is the fifth best goalkeeper in the game. So he's kind of in the same kind of uh, bracket as Allison and Pope and uh, Kepa, who did really well last season as well. So that's uh, interesting because all of those players I just listed are pretty expensive. There is no... 4.5 million goalkeeper who did better per start last season than Johnston. So he was, he was better than, you know, he was better than Ramsdale and Martinez. He was certainly better than, you know, Leno and Pickford and, you know, a Flecken who wasn't in the Premier League last season. So does that mean that Johnston is the best 4.5 million goalkeeper in the game? I think it does. He certainly has got the numbers to back it up. He passed the eye test very well. He picks up bonus points because Crystal Palace don't score too many goals. So kind of saw a, a 0.56 bonus points per game. That means one bonus point every other game. That's pretty nice, really, if you think about it like that. Making saves as well. Decent amount of saves. Almost averaging three saves per game. So you're going to get extra point from that. There is a lot to like about Johnston. There really, really is. So it's crazy to me that people are opting for Pickford or opting for maybe Flecken uh, when, when Johnston is right here and is, is just as good, if not miles better than those other 4.5 million goalkeepers. To me, 1.1% ownership is an absolute shambles 
for who has proven to be the best 4.5 million goalkeeper in the game. Why have people not picked up on this one? I have no idea, but I picked up on it now. So hopefully we can help a few of you guys out with this one. This is the ultimate differential goalkeeper that may leave all of your friends in envy that you came up with this one. Well, you got it from me, but uh, come on, let's, uh, let's all enjoy Johnston. I'm really thinking about putting him in my team. Well, guys, those are my most under-hyped players in the Premier League right now that no one is really talking about. But maybe you guys have got some of your own. Who do you think is the most underappreciated FPL asset in the game right now that no one seems to be giving enough love to? Let me know in the comments and I'll be really interested to read some of your answers there. If you did enjoy this one, please do drop a like. Um, don't forget to subscribe because we'll be doing loads more videos before the season starts and hopefully unearth a few more players that should be in your your FPL teams but aside from that guys thank you so much for watching make sure you check out Fantasy Football Hub I've left the link at the top of the description because they're doing 50% off their subscriptions right now and if you win your mini league you get your money back for the entire season which is just a crazy deal so go check that out their tools are insane if you're serious about your FPL you need to have a toolkit like this you just need it like I'm not even just saying that I, I use this stuff constantly for this video I, I use this stuff for, for hours so so, uh, yeah, there we go, guys. Thanks so much for watching once again, and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.